before the world and say, hey, it's okay. Let's just go to heaven, but it's not quite that simple. We can go, but there's a lot of oppositions. When you all can be seated, if we decide to go from here and so I'm going to Houston. I-45 is a straight shot going south. But it's not just a straight shot without exit and the feeder road. He said, you don't have to ride on the freeway. You don't have to stay on 45. You can just get on the feeder. You're still going south, but you're not on 45. It's what it does is put you closer to all of the eateries and all of the stops that you could possibly make. But you can't do that on 45. You have to get off. Going to heaven. We got a straight shot. So what do you mean? Jesus declared that I alone I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except he come by me. I can stay on 45 and go all the way into Houston. But I can get on the feeder and head it south, but I can't go to Houston on the feeder. See, in order for me to make it to Houston on the feet, I got to get on and get off. Get on and get off. But that's some, pretty much the way our walk and relationship with God is. We get on and we get off and we get on and we get off and we get on and we get off. There have been times that we've taken long trips and especially when we have driven from here to Florida or from here to Connecticut you got to take a rest stop you got to pull over and get gas and refuel and all of those things But when it comes down to our walk and our relationship with Jesus Christ, we got to be consistent. We must be consistent. Listen, being saved is a marvelous thing. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ is a marvelous thing. But let me tell you what Jesus said. He said, the friendship of this world coming, but it had nothing in me. Jesus let us know that you're going to be tried, you're going to be tested, you're going to be tempted. But that's what being a Christian is because it's being like me. And, and I had to go through all of those things. I had to encounter Trials and tests and adversity, temptation. But nothing stopped me from fulfilling the will of God. Jesus even let us know that, see, in this walk you can become weary sometimes. The labor for God... It's exhausting. 
Jesus said, I've been there. Because there was a time that I couldn't go any further. I decided I'll wait at the well until they go and buy food to come back and to nourish up and to strengthen my body. But another opportunity to minister came. And I obeyed God. This walk with God has highs and lows and you know, you got three or seekers, and they love, they, they travel from state to state, from country to country, trying to find the most thrilling roller coaster ride there is. Because of all of the challenges that it presents, it's ups and downs and crooks and turns and loops and all of this. That sounds like what serving God is about. But the thing about it is, can you maintain your relationship with God when life throws you a loop? When you don't know what's around the next corner, can you stay with God? When... You've been beat up, you've been torn up, and you've been torn down and put down. Do you have the spiritual stamina to maintain your walk and relationship with Jesus Christ? Because th this is important because in your walk, in your relationship with Jesus Christ, when God allow trials and tests into your life, then it, the negativity of it is uh, accentuated by the devil. See, if you was with God, you wouldn't have to go through these things. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, see, when you got God in your life, it, it, everything is just, just peaches and cream. Everything is just, you know, it, Euphoric moments, but that's not the truth. Everybody want to go to heaven. You must go through tribulation. And everybody going want to go to heaven must suffer persecution. You got to go through some things that are going to challenge your faith. Because God needs to know whether you love him for real. You can't stop serving God every time you, you run into adversity, every time you face negativity. Do you still have the mind to press on, to run on, to see what the end going to be? It means something when you got God in your life. When God is saying you can make it. When you can hear the small, still voice. When you have made up your mind, you done picked up the towel, and you done ran back and said, I'm going to throw it in, I'm going to throw in the towel, I'm going to give it up. It's not worth it. How many of us have come face to face with that, it's not worth it? You, you done come face to face with about, I'm about to give it all up. Because of the pain and the agony of what we have to encounter to maintain this walk with God. Jesus realized that in order for me to fulfill my Father's will, I got to go to Calvary. I got to go to Calvary. But did, did, then this is why it's necessary to have a Gethsemane. Then I got to turn aside because I know what's in front of me, so now I know what it's going to take to get me through this. But see, many times we don't want to go to Gethsemane. We don't want to spend our time in prayer, agonizing in prayer, saying, Lord, heal my soul. I'm agonizing in pain. 
but I need you to heal my soul. I need you to help me right now. When I look at Jesus and he openly and confessed and said, hey, humanity is crying out. Humanity, even though divinity is wrapped up in humanity, humanity is crying out, Lord, let this bitter cup pass from me. There are things in life that we'll rather bypass. We don't want to go through this. But then you find out it's only through the trials and the tests what you're really made of. Am I really connected to God? Do I have what it takes to go to heaven? Come on, talk to me. How many of you want to go to heaven? You don't want to go to hell. Let me tell you something. When, when I look at the word of God, you, you know, you have to take all of this into consideration. The way of a transgressor is hard. How many of you believe that? Because that's what the Bible said. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. <laughs> but my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. <laughs> wait, 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 Jesus. You shall be persecuted for my name's sake. But you say your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So this is why we need to get an understanding of our walk and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody going to lie on you. Somebody going to talk about you. Come on, talk to me. They lied on Jesus. They talked about Jesus. They're going to lie on you. They're going to talk about you. But as long, let me tell you something, as long as you're doing good. As long as you're doing good. Let them speak all manner of evil against you falsely. Just make sure that what they are saying is false. They are, it's false. It's false. It's false. Because I'm holding fast to his unchanging hand. I'm living holy. I'm living righteous. I'm living godly in this present world. Because I know what's in front of me. But hey. Through much tribulation. I thought he said his yoke was easy and his burden is light. But here you telling me that through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of God. You tell me I got to go through some things. You telling me just like they punish me, they are, they are going, just like they punish you, they're going to punish me. And, and so, but your yoke is easy, my burden is light. But when I look at the sum total of my destiny, you tell me, blessed are they that die in the Lord. Henceforth says the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labor. See, all of this is all of this, this may go on to heaven sweeter. Because I, I know that there is an end to the madness. I know that there's an end to the tribulation. There's an end to the persecution. There's an end to the hardness. Come on, talk to me. You, because I got to endure hardness as a good soldier. You got to go through it. You got to go through it. You got to go through this. <laughs> he told me to endure hardness as a good soldier. Uh, only a good soldier, not a coward soldier. A coward soldier, they go AWOL. They'll quit in the middle of the war. But oh my God, but somebody that's committed, even in the heat of the battle, I'll fight until I die. There's too much at stake now. We got a, a world that's hurting and don't have nowhere to turn. Not for help, they don't. They turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, they turn to strange men, turn to strange women, hoping that that would ease the pain. And all it does is just compound the situation. It only makes matters worse. Oh, yeah, it eased the pain for a moment. You know, the Bible said, let him... The, 
drink to, to forget his misery. But see, you can't stay drunk. <laughs> Sooner or later, you got to sober up. And when you sober up, your misery is still there. So alcohol is just a band-aid solution. Come on, drugs is just a band-aid solution to your misery. But even though I have to go through trials and tests in Jesus Christ, I go through with peace. I know that God is going to bring me out of this thing. I know that he's going to make a way somehow. Come on, talk to me. When the going get tough, then the tough get going. When, when the going get tough, the saints get going. And we go to God, and God brings us out of our circumstance. I heard God, and when he told us that, hey, you got to go through persecution. You got to endure tribulation. You got to suffer for me, but, but cast all your cares. Upon me because I care for you. I'll bring you through whatever you're going through. But you got to lean on me. But see, the world don't have that luxury. They don't have nobody to turn to. The, the Bible tells us we're not as those that are in, in the world without God and without hope. But we got God and we got hope. My God, when the going get tough, I can turn aside to get seminary and just have a little talk with Jesus. And it makes it all right. Bless him up and heal somebody. Everybody need a Gethsemane. Well, what is the Gethsemane? A place that I can contact God. A place that I can reach him. A place that he can reach me. Come on, talk to me. Because of God that I serve. He healed the hurt so many times. I have a witness in the house. Look what the psalmist David said. Weeping. It may endure for a night. Look at your neighbor and say, I have to cry sometime. Oh, yes, I have to cry sometime. But, oh, my God. But I just stay right there. Because you know why? It's only going to endure for a night. It's only going to endure for a little while. But in the morning, look at your neighbor say, in the morning, oh, joy going to come. Oh, yes. If I just hold on to the horns of the altar until the morning, it's going to be all right. God's going to make it all right. Look at your neighbor and say, he's going to make it all right. He's going to make it all right. Oh my God. You know that you know this is what's missing in the homes. And you you know when you have a dysfunction of family, you need a family that prays together and that stays together. You know that when 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 you have to cry sometime, that somebody will embrace you. That somebody would understand and hold you. Come on, talk to me. I don't care if you're male or female. You're going to have to cry sometime. But if something is wrong with a woman that doesn't cry. Something is wrong with a man that doesn't cry. Come on, talk to me. Because to a real man don't cry, you're a fool. Now, when did you become more, more of a man than Jesus Christ? And my God, when he looked over Jerusalem, he wept. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane. Now God, it was strong crying in tears. He wasn't just out there just praying until sweat fell off of him like drops of blood. It was some strong crying. My God, being in touch with your inner emotion. My God, I'm hurting on the inside. I'm hurting on the inside. And let me tell you something. When we got to stop acting like, let, let, let me tell you something. My, I, I'm Superman. I'm, you know, I'm a man of steel. I'm a woman of steel. And my God, if you cut me, it, it don't hurt me. My God, you can shoot me in bullets that bounce off of me. Oh, no. Oh, that not the case but my God when you hurt me I hurt God 
Come on, talk to me. When I look at the men of God of old, they cry. They weep, would weep, and they wept. When I look at Samuel, how he went before God for Saul. He cried all night till he couldn't cry anymore. Come on, talk to me. All night. My God, he wanted God. God, give, give, forgive him. Give him another chance. And he said, oh, no, 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 you can get up. I don't care how, how much you cry. Uh-uh. I have forsaken Saul. I have rejected him. So you're crying. You, can, you don't have to cry anymore. Listen, we're constantly keeping, or should I say, we should constantly keep one another before God in prayer. Because I, you don't know what one another is going through, but you know if you're saved, you're going through something. So you, you know, even though we're going through with joy, we're still going through some things. Because, see, I'm going to pray, God, that you continue to give them joy in the midst of their circumstance, in the midst of their situation. Why do I need joy when I'm going through? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. This is what gives me the power from day to day. This is what gives me the power. My God, to ride out and see what the end going to be. Can I get a witness in the house? I need somebody that understands pain. So why is that necessary? I don't know if I would want to want Jesus Christ as my Savior if he didn't understand pain. And so when, when I go through it, it's, it's a consolation and to go through this thing because we have not in high priest. That cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He know what it means to hurt. He know what it means to agonize in pain. Can I get a witness up in here? Because when you look at what you're going through. When you look at, at your moments and hours of temptation. He said, I've been there. He said, because I've been tempted in all manner just like you are. But I stay saved. I didn't throw in the towel. Come on, talk to me. I kept my hand in the hand of the man that stealed the water. Come on and talk to me. I kept my hand in the hand of the master. But the songwriter said, I should never let go of his hand. Because see, this is what's wrong. In the midst of our trials and tests, we have a tendency to let go. And sometimes the, the, the devil trick us and say, yeah, you can fix that. You can fix that. But, but no, no, no. I can't do nothing without Jesus Christ. But I know one thing. I know one thing that I can do all things. Look at your neighbor. Say, I know one thing that I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I can't make it by myself because anybody know what I'm talking about? I done tried it and I failed. Oh my God. But with Jesus on my side, everything works out fine. Bless him up in here. Somebody! <laughs> but see, God want to take us somewhere. God want to take us somewhere. He want to do some things in our individual lives because the devil is telling you that, hey, there's no hope. He's telling you that there's no way out. And if you if, uh, if come up with a way out, he's telling you that, hey, this is what you ought to do. The devil tell you, you're better off. Can I just teach? As long as Israel was between the proverbial rock and a hard place, they cried out to a God that they didn't even know. 
They was crying out for relief. They was crying out for help. But oh my God. But when God came on the scene. He, he told Israel, say, you wasn't even worthy for me to do anything to you. It, it, it wasn't, wasn't nothing about you that was desirable of you. He said, first of all, you were few in number. He said, then the next thing, oh, oh but I, when I saw you, you was in the pollution of your blood. You were really messed up. Come on, talk to me. Somebody don't understand that when you see a, a baby come into this world, that birth into this world, my God, they're not all cleaned up. They, they got to get cleaned up. Come on, talk to me. They, they got to wipe them up. They got to clean them up. And, and let me tell you something. And when God saw Israel, Israel was messed up. And so God had to wipe Israel off. He had to clean Israel off. And that's just the way some, when God saw us, we was in our mess. Can I get a witness up in here? When God saw us, my God, when he saw Elder Thomas, I wasn't Elder Thomas. I was Isaiah. I was messed up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When God saw me, he saw me in my mess. He didn't say, see me saved. He didn't see me sanctified. He saw me popping my pills. He saw me smoking my dope. He saw me drinking my wine. He saw me at the club. He saw me at this woman or that woman. Come on and talk to me. He saw me messed up. Look at your neighbor and say, he saw me messed up. He saw me messed up. Come on, talk to me. And let me, if you would ask, uh, as David said, he saw me messed up. He saw me mess up. He saw me with that other man's wife. And my God, he saw me messing up. Saw me messing up with that other man's wife. With that other woman's husband. He's. If you were to ask Mary Magdalene, he saw me in my mess. Oh, my, 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 my. It wasn't just the people that caught her in the very act, but God saw her in the very act. He saw her doing the wild thing. He saw her in her mess. But Mary, well dying accuser. Master Dale, no. Neither do I accuse thee. But Mary, go and sin no more. Stop messing up. Stop, stop messing up. Look at your neighbor and say, stop messing up. My God wants you to stop messing up. Come on, talk to me. I understand the pleasure of sin is only for a season, but you got to come to reality. I got to stop messing up. I got to stop messing up. I got to stop messing up. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, yes. Sir. So when I look at myself, I, I analyze my circumstance and situation, and I look at it and say, oh, no, this, this is not worth it. It's not worth it. And let me tell you something about sin. Uh, God, even though it's, it's a pleasure of sin and for a season, it's not worth it. At the end of the day, it's not worth it. You asked a drug pusher, my God, oh yeah, you and you had it going on. But now they, they done caught you. Now you're standing before the judge. Now you're being sentenced. You're locked up. Now, my God, years of your life taken away. And let me tell you, is it worth it? I'm trying to tell you sin is not worth it. Samson, the Bible says he loved him a harlot. Oh, yes, oh, yes. He loved him a harlot. That's the Bible. He loved him a harlot. And some, some of you, you, you know what it means to run after somebody that don't want you. You know what it means to run out the man that don't want you. You know what it means to run out the woman that don't want you. Oh, they'll mess you up. They'll mess you. Look at your name and say, oh, they'll mess you up. They'll mess you up. You thought that man was going to leave his wife for you. That's what he told you. My God, as, as long as he was getting the milk from the cow. 
and you, you kept wanting, you kept wanting, hey, okay, okay, you, you, you've been milking a cow for a long time now, but did you, you hadn't left your wife, and then you find out that I'm not leaving my wife for you, but he strung you alone long enough to mess you up. She strung you alone long enough to mess you up. Now, your head's over here in a circumstance, that, a situation that have gone sour. Now, it's not so much your, your body is involved. Now, your emotions. And when you tamper with emotions, it, it, it now it mess with me mentally. Come on, talk to me. It's it messing with me mentally, so I, I can't think right. I, I can't sleep at night. Come on, talk to me. So, so I, I need something to, to put me to sleep, and I need something to wake me up. Come on, talk to me. Because the, my, my emotions have been tampered with, and now it's messing with me mentally. Now, I can't think right. I, I can't think right. You, you're walking around in a trance because your mind is focusing on something that's going nowhere. Guess what? I'm talking to everybody that's in the house. Everybody that's in the house. God, because you don't have to stay that away. You don't have to stay that away. Mary, I know that you were messed up, but uh, 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 stop it now. I got I know that you've been messed up, but you can stop it now. I got stop running after something. My God, grasping at the wind, grasping at the wind. You grasping for something that's not even there. You want a relationship, but it's not in, it's not there. Come on, talk to me. When I was growing up, that was a whole song. I'll be the other woman. That's a whole song. That's not, I know you're not my man, but I'll be the other woman. I know you got a wife, but I'll be the other woman. Ooh. Anybody know what I'm talking talking about? It says, hey, I just tell you, I, I'm better than that. I'm better than that. I'm better than that. Oh, come on, talk to me. Once I was looking at, I forget what the name of the show was, but it was a WNBA player. She was messing around. She was messing around with a married man. So her friends, the family was trying to, hey, that's not a good situation. So they brought this guy in, and he was talking to her. By her being an athlete, he said, listen, your whole career, you never came off the bench. You've been a starter your whole life. And everything that you endeavor to do in sports, you, you've been a starter. So you never came off the bench. He used that analogy to say, why would you want to come off the bench now? Why would you want to come off the bench now? And now that registered with her. She broke down and cried. She cut off the relationship because until you see yourself, my God, mixed up and messed up in something that's going nowhere. It's going nowhere. My God, you got somebody. My God, they just hold you for a few minutes, a few hours. And my God, then they say, I'll see you the next time because you don't know, you don't know when it's going to be a next time. But so whenever they come to make a booty call, Cause see, some of what I'm preaching and teaching just went over somebody's head. But since we know today what it means, uh, uh, making a booty call, they just stop by, stop in. My God, they hit it and quit it. And see, this is what I love about serving God. It, it doesn't make any difference how messed up 
you are Miss Humpty and Miss Dumpty, he can put your life back together again. I don't care how broken you are. I don't care how many pieces you'll, you'll be, your lives have been shattered into. He can put you back together again. But they see, this is why we need Jesus Christ in our life. That when I encounter hardship, when I encounter adversity, my God, I can keep a smile on my face because I know this too shall pass. That God is going to bring me out of this circumstance and situation. Do I have anybody in the house, my God, that know what it's like to be like Joseph? My God, one trial after another. When you think that you have arrived, my God, the rug just snatched out from you all over again. And you every time you look up look up you're starting over you're starting over but it took that to get joseph to his destiny it took all of that adversity in his life to get him where god wanted him to be but i like this but joseph never said anything negative because the Bible continually to tell us that, hey, even though he was going through this, the favor of God was with him. It does, it's not because you're going through trials and tests, you're experiencing hardships and hardness in your life. It doesn't mean that God has forsaken you. But there's something that God got to mold us and make us. It's some things, it's trials and tests that let us know where we stand in our walk, in our relationship with Jesus Christ. But until you try him. Until you try him. Anybody know him as the Prince of Peace? Would you know that the God that we serve can give you peace in the valley? Even in the midst of your struggles, God can give you peace. I got God let you know I'm consoling you. I'm bringing you out of this circumstance. You know, sometimes you sit around, and my God, because you are emotionally disturbed and mentally disturbed because of negativity in your life, my God, you sit up and cry when nobody's around. Some of you can go home, and maybe not tonight, but some time during the week or the coming weeks you, you hear this message again and you start telling yourself I'm, I'm better than that you began to weep because I, I don't need to be coming off the bench when I can be a starter I don't want to be coming off the bench my God when I can be a star come on talk to me when, when women are not confidence in themselves you don't let nobody define you you may not win Miss America you may not win Miss Universe but let me tell you something God has put something in you that's special God has placed something in you that is special and don't you let nobody define you. You got to understand who you are. You got to be confident in who in yourself. Come on, talk to me. Now, God, you, you know, we've had parents that told us, hey, you look too much like your daddy to be anything. Your daddy wasn't nothing and you're not going to be nothing. Come on, talk to me. But that's not true. Our daddy made his choice. I got to make my choice. Come on, talk to me. I got, I got to choose to do the right thing or I can choose to, to make bad choices. And let me tell you something. I don't don't care. And don't worry about what your sister was like. Don't worry about what your aunt, your mother was like. You got to live for you. And it's sad to say in our society, you got a lot of parents would rather see you doing bad than doing good. No, no, they, they, they want you to have a good job, but I'm talking about morally so. They, they want you to be club hopping. They want you to go from one man to the next, one woman to the next. They want you, you know, you know buying buy around for everybody. They want you to buy the dope so they can smoke. They want you to buy the, provide the ride and the gas so they can ride around and look good. My God, talking loud and saying nothing. But when you decide enough is enough, 
I've had enough. That I'm coming out of this circumstance. You've been boxed in too long. Now look at your neighbor. Say, you've been boxed in too long. You've been boxed in too long. In other words, what you're saying, Elton, you've been in your circumstance and situation too long. It's time for you to break out the box. It's time for you to come out of the box. My God, hey, my God, then you can say, hey, you can say, free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. I'm not talking about I don't have to go to the back door anymore. I got y'all ain't saying nothing. I got I'm not talking about I got to go to the color on the fountain. My God, I'm talking about free at last. My God, I can think for myself. I can do what I want to do now because I don't have somebody telling me who I am. Don't let them want nobody run you down. And you start thinking like that. Can, can I just teach you? Yeah. Now listen here. Do, you don't let them mess with your psyche. That's right. That's right. But I like what Solomon said. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a woman thinketh in her heart, so is she. I got, you got to start thinking for yourself. I got, I don't, I don't know. You know, ain't nobody going to want you like that. God like me like this. God liked me just like I am. My God, God loved me even though I was messed up. Don't you know that? My God, don't you know God loved you when you were messed up? My God, while we were yet messed up. <laughs> while we were yet sinners. My God, while we were yet messed up. My God, God loved us. My God, he gave his son for the ungodly of this world. My God, so I can turn it around. I can turn it around. You can turn it around. Get it together. Get it together. Oh, my God. You've been knocked down too long. Now look at your neighbor and say, get up. Or should I say, it's about time. Don't you think about time for you to get up? Don't you think it's about time for you to get up from your circumstance, to get up from your situation? Come on, talk to me. My God, let me tell you something. The Bible tells us about four lepers. My God, in the midst of a time of famine, my God, they was ostracized from the community, so they lived outside of the town. And so they sat there one. My God, you know, probably sitting there feeling sorry for themselves. My God, somewhere, hey, they said, we messed up. Oh, oh we messed up. But then guess what they said? Somebody said, oh, wait, wait, wait. Why should we hear until we die? When we can rise up and do something about our condition. Oh, God, don't you think it's about time that you get up from your circumstance? Don't you think it's about time you get up from your condition? It's time to rise up. Look at your neighbor and say, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up from your circumstance. Rise up, my God, from your situation. Rise up. Oh, my God. Uh -uh, I'm going to get myself together. I got I done made up my mind. I got that I done been here too long. I got that. Uh, let, let me tell you something. It's take this type of preacher to make you see yourself. I got I don't have no business here. I don't have no business here. Just like you don't have no business where you are. Get up. Get up. Oh, my God. Uh, no, no. I, I've been to talk of the town too long. They've been disgrade, degrading me because of my actions. Because of my action. You know, they're not lying on me. They're, they're, these are my actions. I've been acting a fool. I've been doing the fool thing. Come on, talk to me. But they, and folks talking about me, they laughing at me. Your friends laughing behind your back. I got, oh, yeah, you're all girlfriend. You all of that. But behind your back, they... But with friends like that, who need enemies? I need somebody that's concerned about me. I need somebody that just like the mirror tell me the truth. The mirror never lie. I need somebody that's going to tell me the truth. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Oh, it's not you, queen. 
when you sitting there saying, I, I, yeah, yeah, hey, girl, you bad. You all of that. Uh, yeah, you all of that. And you all of that. Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You, you, got, you got it going on. My uh, God, yeah, yeah, look at it. Yeah, you, you stuffed all up. There. My God, you, you, you too blessed to be stressed. You, you, you got all of that stuff up there. But now you, you got to realize the mirror doesn't lie. Can I just teach it right there? The mirror is saying, suck it in. And all that stuff sticking out, straighten it up. The mirror said, because you messed up. You messed up. I got you accepting a messed up you. You accepting a messed up situation. Come on and talk to me. But my God, when you look at yourself and you say, I got to do better. I got to, to do better. I'm not satisfied with me. Now guess what? What, what, what? what must I do, El Tom? Lay aside every sin and lay aside every weight that does so easily beset you. I got so you can run the race that's set before you with patience. My God, I can't run with all this weight on me. I can't run weighted down. My God, with pride and bitterness, bitterness, bitterness in my life. God, I got to be clean. God wash me with the full of soap. God cleanse me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. See, sir, too many times we trying to get the outside clean. We trying to focus on the outside. My, 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 my. My God, when you see a person with tuberculosis, my God, you can't see. My God, what's up, what causes the effects on the outside? But so until they get what's on the inside out, my God, the outside won't heal. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. But now we got to preach it. My God, so I can touch your heart. My God, Lord, Lay your hands on me. I need a touch from your divine hand. I need a touch. Look at your neighbors. I need a touch. What about you? I need God to do something for me. I need God to deliver me from me. Help me, Jesus. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. Help me, Lord. Lord, will you help me? I don't have nobody else to turn to. When the Bible tells us about a woman that had a circumstance, she had a situation. She was messed up on the inside. She had an issue of blood. Come on, talk to me. My God, but it was messing her up on the outside. My God, she didn't have the strength that she needed. But the Bible says, yo, she wanted to get better. Look at your neighbor and say she wanted to get better. But got nothing better, but only worse. And see, some of you, you want to get better. You change friends. And then the most of the time, they're worse than the friends that you just left. You done left one town and went to another town. But the same devil was waiting on you when you got off the bus. There. When you unloaded your luggage, all oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. My God, oh yeah, you trying to run away from that woman. My God, that had your nose so open. My God, that had you all so old messed up. My God, you thought your name was Obama. My God, but you thought if I just go to another town. If I just get from around this woman, my God, I'll be a situation. I'll be all right. But when you went to the next town, it was another one with a dress high stuff. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. It was another one had big legs. It was another one. My God, that horn had long hair. It's another one. My God, that was fair to look upon. And oh, my God, you went right back to where you supposed to ran away from. Can I just teach you? The problem is not that woman. The problem is in you until you get your life together. 
I got until you, my God, see you for who you are and what you are. Now you say, Lord, no, you can't run from sin because from one city to the next is sin. And my God, oh yes, every time you go from one place to the next, my God, there's still sin in the city. I got there's no place, but the only thing that keep me, my God, I don't care where they took Joseph from. My God, he was kept by the power of God. And let me tell you something. My God, I don't care. My God, from one city to the next, from one town to the next, from one state to the next, my God, from one country to the next. Oh, oh y'all ain't gonna talk to me. My God, what Spitzer couldn't do, wasn't doing in the United States, he found comfort in a whore in Argentina. You mean they do that in Argentina? Oh, they do it in China? They do it in Japan? Come on, talk to me. The devil is nationally and internationally. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. He, he not just a localized devil. My God, the devil is both nationally known and International law. I got so everywhere you go, there's a devil, there's a devil, there's a devil. There's somebody there, I got trying to tempt you. There's somebody trying to get you to fall from your steadfast. I got to leave my job because these women, these women won't let on. Oh, they ain't the problem ain't with the women. The problem is with you. My God, Joseph didn't run. My God, when powder for a wife, my God, she was trying to give it to him. I got to come on and hit it and quit it. I got to come lie with me. She wasn't even trying to work up to her. You, you want, Joseph, would you like some tay? Would you like a spot of tay? No, no, no. Uh-uh. She, she would say, hey, let's go to the bedroom. Let's go get it on. But Joseph said, I don't want to get it on. My master been too good to me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I got you not to worry about. Ain't no sense in going home because Jody got your girl and gone. Uh, and Joseph said, hey, it's all right. It's all right for you to come home because I don't want to. I'm in love with God. Let me, let me bring it home to these married folk. Ain't no sense that you think that your marriage is going to be kept because y'all both got the same name. The man got obligation to the woman. The woman got obligation to the husband. Because let me tell you something. I know I'm good looking. Somebody want me. Come on, talk to me. There's somebody that wants you. I don't care if you're ugly as home ain't sin. Somebody wants you. You know why? Because they like one dog like taking another dog's bone. Come on, talk to me. I got they they don't care. They they, they just want they just want to take somebody. I got to be yeah, oh you available? My God, that they, they oh they they trying to find out your status. They trying to find out are you committed to your relationship or not? My God, do you want some extra curriculum? I got you 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 want to do some overtime? Do you want something on the side? No, I don't want anything on the side unless it's my gravy. Put it in a bowl. I don't want it on my potato. I don't want it on my steak. I want it on the side. But I don't want none of that other stuff on the side. years ago I don't know who baby was they were but the, ain't they cute don't it make you want to know ain't no 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 look that good to make me want another one. I ain't gonna tell that lie hey, no I, I don't they, they, they could not no no I don't want another one. you 
one thing about serving God. It gives you standards. I'm not talking about just being a member of, church, of a church. Because the churches are this, in this day and time are so liberal. Everything goes on. They don't adhere to the biblical principles of what God's word says. And this is why when people, they come here, they hear the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, and they're trying to figure out, I, I, I never heard that. I didn't even know. But this, it's Bible. It's Bible. It's Bible. You see, God will put something in you for you to be careful. But it won't keep you against your will. You got to want to be kept. You got to want to be kept. Come on, talk to me. See, my wife don't keep me. Uh-uh, I'm kept because I want to be kept. Come on, talk to me. Because you got somebody, I don't care if you're, you're, you're married. My God, somebody out there, they, they trying to hit on you. And you, you, and, and you stop being ta-ta. You, you, and you start going. Grinning like a fox in your jacket. <laughs> Looking at me. He bought me a cup of water. He bought me a soda by my death. <laughs> you know you messed up. Hey, he going to come. He got to collect on that soda. He know exactly how many about you. <laughs> He know when he brought them. You, you, you not keeping account on him, but he keeping account. And then he going to come to collect. Now, hey, I done bought you a whole six pack. <laughs> now it's time, time to pay up. It's time to pay up. Come on, talk to me. So I tell you what, you, you seem like such a nice young lady. How about we go out? Let me take you out to dinner. Let me buy you a lunch for you today. Okay, let me go put my stuff up. Oh, yeah. It's a setup. Look at the lady says it's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. That it's a setup. <laughs> I might look like I came from heaven today, but I didn't. <laughs> I might act like I came from heaven, but I didn't. No, see, see, we come up in here, we act like act like we don't. We never known sin. No, you you hear these folks and, and you know you going to hell. Man, I've been saved so long, I don't know what sin is. Just, uh, that's wrong. Because if you done forgot what sin is, how you know you're not committing? Come on now. Come on now. Can I just teach you? You'll never forget what sin is. Because the Bible said it overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. What is your testimony? What did God deliver you from? Because don't smoke in the steel, don't smoke it. Peel popping is still peel popping. Woman hopping, man hopping is still wrong. And those are the things that God delivered us from. But my God, since we have, my God, these are precious promises. My God, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and the filthiness of the spirit. My God, let us lay aside every sin and every weight that does so easily be set up. My God, wash us. My God, cleanse us from everything. Because God, I want to spend eternity with you, God. I want to hear you say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant in a die. Oh, into the jaw of the Lord. Now bless him up and heal somebody. I'm about finished. See, some of us here today are living in our yesterday. Help me to understand that, Elder Thomas. You're still experiencing pain and hurt from your yesterdays. You can't even get, get on with your life. 
Sometimes you didn't try to start a new relationship, but you still too attached to your past. You can meet a nice young man, a nice young lady. But you don't give them a chance because yeah, the last man I had, he hurt me. The last man. Let me, let me explain something to you. You say the last woman that you had, she hurt you. You know why? They didn't care for you. They didn't care for you. So that's why they can take your, your fragile emotions and, 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 and mishandle them and rough them up and squeeze them in because they don't care. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. And I lay down my life for the sheep because I care for them. But he that is a hireling, when he see the wolf coming, he flee. And the reason he flee is because he cared not for the sheep. And this is why, you know, you, you don't have nobody that when, when you're going through, they're going to stick with you. You're looking for somebody that's going to stand by and say, hey, you know, you, you, you got a Miss Job. You got a Miss Job in your life that when God, he, even though he's going through, instead of her coming with words or confidence, say, baby, we're going to get through this. We didn't been through tough time before. We're going to get through this. But now she said, why don't you curse your God and die? Why? Don't you curse your God and die? But Job saying, hey, this is my life. I can't depend on you, but I can depend on God. He's the faithful God. Oh, yes. Uh, he, 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 he turned around and he'll wipe the tears from my eye. But you, you, you just compounding my circumstance. You're just compounding my situation. You're not trying to make it better. You're not trying to make it better. And let me get back to that husband and wife thing. You better make sure that you pour maintenance on your relationship. Keep it running good. Because the devil is not playing. Come on, talk to me. Why do you think that there's adultery and fornication in the Bible? Because when you don't do your part, somebody else will. And I didn't finish this the other day that I was here. I, I dealt with it. You know, see that, that woman, that horse woman that they saw, in, that Solomon talked about? Now she said, come on and, and go home with me because I didn't deck the bed. At least the bed made up. Tell me you won't even make up the bed. She said, she, it's perfumed. It's smelling good. Come on, talk to me. And, then, and, and you think that these things doesn't matter. You think that these things doesn't matter. Come on, talk to me. You, you think that you, you can just come and come home and, and that you done been at home a, a while and, and you, you still looking like something a cat drug in. Listen. I don't want to come home and every time look, I'm hurting. I'm this, I don't want to hear that foolishness. I don't want to hear that foolishness. I'm hurting. I all, because see, I know you're lying. Because just as soon as you want to do something you want to do, yeah, you don't hear nothing about no pain. You go out there and pick the car up and, and then come on back in the house. Other time you can't hold your leg. Or, help me put my leg on. Help me, help me. Ring. What? You didn't say help me get him off the couch. The next thing you know. Don't throw a throat over the arm. Your hand on nothing. Hey, where you going? 
I thought you was hurting. I thought that you was hurting. Nigga, those purse throwed on the arm, keys in the hand. Now you, you read you, and you see them there, and then they ain't walking out there. <laughs> Can I just keep it real up in here? But see, when it come down to you, they hurt it. Or when it come down to you, they hurt it. But then when they want to do what they want to do, man, they didn't bear the keys, they're no person. And they, they stepping, my God, they, 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 you know, they ready to put the, the pedal to the metal, the heel to the steel. I got, they, they, mm. Stop it now. Stop it now. Stop it now. Come on, talk to me. You better pull maintenance on your relationship. But let me tell you something. Ain't nothing secure in this day and time. Years ago, you could say so. Ain't nothing secure in this day and time. Because if you kick the dog and the cat too many times, you're going to go out there looking for them. They won't be on the porch anymore. Because they, you wonder why they, why they sleeping on the neighbor's porch. You, you wonder why they sleeping on the neighbor's porch. Because the neighbor is not mistreating them. And see, this is what's in the relationship. All these selfish wives and selfish husbands, all they think about is themselves. My, that, my, my career. I don't want to know about no career. Your career started when you, you said I do. Your career as a wife. Boy, you can hear that rap being on cotton right now. It, it got real quiet. Because, see, they don't, you know, this is what's not being preached and taught in the church in accordance to what God's word says. I got, you can have a vibrant relationship. As long as everybody, both parties, doing their part. Now, you got a little leeway in now. You understand. You, you, Because, see, the thing about it, you've been married a while. You you know. You know when, when, when it's all of this foolishness, and you, you know when it's for real. Am I doing good? You're doing good. So, so I done pulled the cloak off some of your little, 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 little shams you've been pulling. You don't, you don't even plan meals for the husband anymore. Because I want, I will, when you talk about guess who coming to them, my husband did. I'm gonna fix his. I'm gonna fix his favorite dessert. Some of them had a favorite dessert so long they forgot what their favorite dessert is. <laughs> and you show up there, say, "Say, baby, I fix your favorite dessert. Which one is that?" <laughs> <laughs> you ain't fixed one so long I forgot which one my favorite dessert is. Look how y'all look. We're going to get better. We're going to get better. Got to get better. We got to get better. We got to get better. I got to get better. Come on and talk to me. All right, all right, all right. Y'all can sit down. Now it's the wife's turn. <laughs> Y'all got the right little divide this thing. When you get out from work, you come home to your second job. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that? You don't come in there and just, hey, jump in the bed. You don't come to, hey, you see what needs to be done around the house to help the wife out. And you do your part. Go, 
once in a while, go bring me that thing that you, you push. You know, you push it. Oh, see? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You don't drag it. You push it. Oh, oh, oh. you know, you're in demonstrations and power, so you got to use examples so to, so to make the, to, 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 to drive the point home. Because you, you, you don't want a pretty boy for a husband. See that? See that? That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's that. you, see, you see what I just... That's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't drag this across the... But I'm, I'm, I'm going to educate you today. It go easier this way. Yeah, bring me that too. Bring me that too. It, it, it'll roll better this way to tell you, John. It don't have a reverse on it. Just go bring me some more of that stuff back there. Because the, the, these men don't know this. Bring me some dishwashing liquid and all of that stuff. I'm going to be finishing a little bit. All right, our men, stand up. I want y'all to get a little good look at this. Stand up. Don't be scared. It ain't going to bite you. This contraption here <laughs> is called a vacuum cleaner. And it has a certain motion to it. It picks up dirt, dust, little particles on the floor. Am I making sense? So when, when you come home, you don't just. You don't just step up. Babe, you need to get that vacuum clean. No, 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 no. I put it there. So if you, if you don't trip over it, you, you might get it and use it. See, this, this, this thing is called a mop. Now, don't put it in the bucket. I want to put it out there so I can use it. Set it up there, sister brother. No, set it up there. And you, you take this in, you, you wet it. See, this has water in it. You take it, put the mop in there, squeeze it out. See, this, this is a lady's mouth. But that man need one so he can take care of this. Now, don't be around there playing around. So when you, you, you make a big old circle out there, you, you get, I mean, when you hit it, you, you, you clean it. You're covering a lot of ground. Y'all didn't know that? This is a dust man. I mean, I like it because you don't even have to hurt your back. Oh, right, right, right. You got a handle on it. I'm, I'm making it convenient for you. And you, this is called a broom. And it looks like that because it's been used. That's the way a broom looks when it's been used a while. And you, you, you go across and you see this stuff, you just sweep it up. You sweep it up. You didn't know that? You just sweep it up, hit it. You don't have to bring the trash can. But then you go and take it. And you dump it in the trash can. And still be saved. Right. Yeah. This is Clorox. It's a clean and a disinfectant. Now I wash it. See, everything you see me doing, I do it at home. But see, certain stuff of my, my wife's clothes, I don't, I don't bother because, I, you know, I want, we got a streak going. 
then I don't want it to come to an abrupt end. Because I done went there and messed up something. But that's what I know to do. Oh, I do. Now I wash all of my clothes. Except for those that I'm taking to the clean. So I make sure that I put this in the wipes. If don't, they're going to be coming out looking like a leper. I know what this liquid is. I'm going to be finished in just a minute. Listen, they call this dishwashing liquid or dis detergent. So what this is is that, no, it don't go in the dishwasher. It means that you run water in the sink and put this in here. This, this stuff is amazing. It's amazing that when you take and put these, you got the sauces and all of this and stuff in the sink. You put, you apply this detergent to it, and you wash it clean. Is that making sense? See, I don't care who they are. They can, they can eat, eat off of whatever I wash. Now, I have so much bleach in there. This, she, she coming out, ooh, you know you got too much bleach in there. I got bleach in the dishwater, bleach in the wristwater. I said, I'm going to make sure if I miss something on this side, it gets on the other side. When I put them in the dish drain, they, they smell like bleach. Come on, talk to me. See, this is the kind of man you want. You don't want one when they just, just got a dip in his hip. No, 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 you don't want no stiff britches. You want somebody that's going to, hey, get the job done. Oh, good God Almighty. Toilet bowl clean. I don't care about, I don't care about you looking. So if you go and take a seat on it, you put this in, you un squeeze that, turn it around, take and squeeze around the bowl of it, let it sit in there a while, and you go in there, put your glove on, and you scrub. There's the brush, there's the brush, there's the brush. That, and let me see this, this, and then he see you get your glove, put your glove on. Yeah, y'all like glove. This ain't the one that's gonna make you. Yeah. No, it, it, ain't, it, it ain't gonna make you back up from it. Maybe if I put some glitter on it. <laughs> now look at the name and say, ain't God good? <laughs> this what makes the home happy when everybody doing their part come on talk but she, she didn't bring the iron and the ironing board but don't worry about that but I, I made mention of you, you got kids you help out come on talk to me and parents stop being lazy 
You know what? Your children got to go to school.